A new Rust-based bundler just hit the JavaScript ecosystem. It aims at being an easy drop-in for Webpack, and it's called RSPack. Obviously, NX has support for it, so let's check it out. RSPack is an easy drop-in for Webpack because the team behind it took basically the current Webpack architecture, but started rewriting the core vital parts in Rust. Why Rust? Well, because it's designed for speed. But furthermore, this gives additional advantages compared to the current Webpack implementation. We're no more limited by JavaScript's multi-threading limits, but can now run highly parallelized operations that leverage the modern multi-core CPUs. In addition, RSPEC also comes with built-in bundling features that are frequently used, such that they don't create a bottleneck when compiling large-scale applications. And lastly, it also comes with a specialized incremental compilation feature that highly optimizes the hot module replacement feature that Webpack also had. So depending on your project structure and size, RSPack claims to be between five to 10 times faster than the current Webpack implementation. Now we ran some initial stats also on our end and we saw some cool improvements. For large components, RSPack was about four times faster than the current Webpack implementation. The dev server started like five times faster than the current Webpack implementation. And we saw some overall four and a half times faster production builds. So these are already some really promising results and the RSPEC team keeps improving as we speak. So this sounds all nice and cool, but let's have a look how you can build today RSPEC based React applications with NX. So to build a new RSPEC application with NX today, we can create a new NX workspace. Let's call it my RSPEC app. And as a preset, you provide add novel RSPEC. So this sets up an NX standalone application for React development that now uses RSPEC as our bundler. And so here you can see the application that has been pre-set up for us such that we can get up to speed quickly. And if we go to the package JSON, you can see that we have a bunch of scripts already predefined that we can run in our project here. So we can already run the build for this project, which now obviously uses RSPAC behind the scenes. We can run linting on our project. We can run testing on our project that uses Jest or optionally also VTest for the test runner. And we can even run an end-to-end -end test on our project that leverages Cypress to test our RSPAC based application. As you can see, all these NPM scripts behind the scenes leverage NX to run these targets. These targets are defined in a product JSON at the root of your workspace, which is basically a more advanced package JSON script format that gives additional metadata to NX. For instance, here the build script runs a so-called executor, which is nothing else than a function on this NPM package that takes these inputs to run or compile your RSPAC application. It has core properties such as the output path where the build would be placed, things like the entry point, the TS config, as well as the RSPAC config that is being used. This RSPAC config lives here at the root of our workspace as well and allows us to further configure RSPAC. By default, NX takes care of most of the setup, but if you need to customize it further, you can chime in here and add your own RSPAC configuration or override what NX provides. So this allows us to get up to speed really quickly because we can just go ahead and say NX serve or npm start, and this would now compile and run the application with RSPAC at localhost 4200. And if you go there, we see the application running and serving an example component. Obviously, all the things such as hot module reloading work just as you would expect it. So if we change this here and say, hi, RSPAC, and then go back to our application, it already is reloaded and refreshed. All the core features that NX is known for already work out of the box. For instance, caching. Previously, we ran the NX test feature, but since we changed the app component, NX will rerun the tests again on that app component. But if I don't change any of the source files, environment, or other crucial inputs that would invalidate the cache, now it wouldn't run the operation again, but rather it would just pull it out of the cache. And so that additionally speeds up operations, especially on CI. And this doesn't only involve the speed features in sense of caching and affected commands, but also the tooling that NX comes with and the modularization possibilities. As such, I can go ahead and generate a new React library Let's call this products and it should go into the directory libs. 
Now this will generate a new library directly into my library folder. And it again comes out of the box with just linting and other types of features that you might need. Now this has already a component built in here that is exposed over such an entry point file, which allows me to nicely encapsulate features that I built inside those local libraries. Using those is extremely easy because all of them get exposed via a root level TS config file that we can see down here. And so I can just go into my RS pack application and import a new feature and consequently just reference it here in my application component. If I again surf this application, we would see now the also welcome to products component being rendered properly. Also our NX console extension for Visual Studio Code and IntelliJ just work out of the box. So you can actually go ahead and just use that one for generating new libraries if you don't know all the commands and generators out of your head. And so you can go again and generate a React application as we did before, but now in a more visual way where we say this could be our card application, we run it again, and this would now generate a new library just besides here our products library that we generated before. And also the NX project graph works. So once you start modularizing your application, it comes in really handy as you can just run NX graph and then explore the structure of your RS pack based application. But what about if you have an existing NX workspace or monorep already and you wanna use RS pack based applications inside that? Obviously that's also possible. So if you have already an NX based monorepo with for instance, a React application and various libraries in here, it is very easy to add an RS pack based application. Again, all you need to do is install the novel RS pack library. And once you have that, you will have all the generators that come with it. As such, we can go ahead and generate a new RS pack application. Let's call it RS pack app which will then just be placed alongside our React application. Now, right now, it doesn't do a whole lot because it just basically lives here in this workspace. It has its end-to-end -end test generate alongside, but it doesn't really use any of the projects inside this NX monorepo. But this could actually be a nice way to experiment with some RS pack applications because now you can leverage and just import, let's say the products library into the RS pack application. Let's go ahead and open our RS pack application and import the products library. If we refresh our graph again, you would now see that it connects to the products library down here. So we can now run our RS pack application and see it load the product component. So in this way, you can leverage the monorepo code sharing feature to pull in some of the components and experiment how they would run inside the RS pack application compared to the previous Webpack based React app. We are really excited to see all these improvements going on in the JavaScript tooling ecosystem, especially the speed aspect of it, because performance lies at our own very core values. NX tries to be the best CLI independent of your framework choice. And so what we want to do is remove friction such that you can easily test out those, these tools, get up to speed quickly and ship features. As usual, like and subscribe. And if you want to learn more about RSPack, go to rspack.dev, which is the official documentation site, where you will find more guides about how to get started, what is the main difference between RSPack and Webpack, and more performance metrics. Also, if you want to learn more about Annex, you can obviously just go to annex.dev. I'll see you in the next one.